In today's training, I'm gonna show you exactly how I bought two domain names for less than $18, and then less than two weeks later, flipped them for almost 1200 bucks. And not only that, but I'm also gonna show you how I found a domain for $15 and turned it around for $25,000. And another one I bought for eight bucks and sold it for $6,500 less than two months later. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the full domain flipping course with Q&A. That's right, this video is probably gonna be more valuable than some of the courses out there that charge hundreds or even thousands of dollars. And guess what? It's here on YouTube for free. So if you appreciate it, smash a like button and watch this entire video at least one time all the way through. Because if you're serious about making money with domains, we got you covered. In fact, just last night, I put a post on my blog and less than an hour later, I checked it and we had hundreds and hundreds of questions all about how to flip domains for profit. So we're cutting out all the fluff. I'm gonna answer your questions. We're gonna go through and treat this like a course as if you paid money to learn it. Only, all you gotta do is smash the like button and leave a comment. Because we're gonna show you how to choose domains, we're gonna answer your questions, we're gonna dive in and actually buy domains together, plus I'm gonna show you my low risk buying hacks and where to sell your domains for massive profit. Then of course, I'm gonna take some time and answer questions from you, the viewer, so that you could get started flipping domains, building websites, and pretty much anything that puts money in your pocket. So, without any further ado, let's dive in. Section one, choosing the right domain name. First, a couple of questions. Bruce says, as I understand things, this equates to buying something at a garage sale like a bicycle. So I can park it in my yard for, with a for sale sign, use it for myself, fix it up, add value, then even advertise and market it. So can I blindly buy domains without any research and expect to get rich quick? Well, let's take a look here because there's actually a lot to answer in that question. Is buying domains like a garage sale? Well, yes and no. At a garage sale, you're buying things, hoping that a buyer comes locally and picks them up from you. With domains, we're doing something a little bit more calculated and precise. So when we talk about buying dud domains, that's not always going to happen because of what I'm about to show you, which is why you want to pay close attention. And you should never expect to get rich quick from anything because this is a business. The average person trying to make money online, whether buying domains or doing TikTok videos, makes nothing. You got to understand that because that's the fact. We need to go through and look at this like a business and treat this objectively and look at domains with a very high success probability. Next, Ibrahim says, as I understand, there's no guarantees, but what criteria do you use to determine a domain name would be valuable when it's resold? Well, we're going to answer that here in just a minute. And Patrick says, what's a good minimum range to begin with? Can I start with like 200 or 500 bucks? Well, yes and no. It all depends on the type of domains you're going after. If you're going for auction domains, 500 bucks isn't going to get you very far. However, if you're buying domains that have expired for $8, yeah, that's like 50, 60 domains you can buy for 500 bucks. And if you do it right, my thinking is you should be able to get more than $500 for those domains. So yeah, let's talk about how to choose good domains. We need to break this down into two categories. The first category we have is SEO value. This is where the domain value is based on backlinks, how many rankings it has in the search engines, how much traffic it gets, what kind of stuff it used to have, what it used to rank for, anything about search engine value. The second criteria we're gonna look at is name alone. We will spell this right. Name alone is where I'm valuing this based on the domain alone. For example, if I have crypto.com, that's worth a lot of money because people want domains about crypto, so therefore I should be able to sell it for a lot of money. Now, when I'm looking at domains, I am looking at both factors at once. I'm looking at what I can do with it in terms of backlinks and what it's valued at for someone buying it for backlinks, and then I'm also looking at the name alone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use several different tools to make this work. When I choose domain names, I gotta look for a good name based on either or or both criteria. If I get both, 
that's kind of a no-brainer. Like, I could sell it for SEO or for the name alone. So I'm going to pick that one up depending on what the price is. If I'm looking at one for SEO, I got to look at it and see if everything fits the criteria. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check expired domains. I'll check on different domain lists like expireddomains.net, justdropped.com, or my favorite, Spamzilla. On Spamzilla, I can actually go through and I could see exactly what's going on to see what I can purchase. Now, these are primarily looking at expired domains. There's another way to do this, which I've done many times, where you just come up with a creative name and you can sell it. I'm gonna show you some hacks for that as well. First of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at Spamzilla and expired domain tools, and we're gonna try to find out what just dropped what we can pick up and what we can use it for. For example, I can go through here and I can see the different criteria. If I want ones with lots of backlinks or lots of rankings, I can sort these by the domain rating, domain positions, traffic, or whatever it is I want. Now, I can click on domain rating and I can see which ones have the highest domain rating. For example, right here I could see freewebtemplates.com has a pretty solid ranking and it's got some traffic. So I can click here, look in my Ahrefs keyword tool or other keyword tools and find out exactly what these people are ranking for. So in Ahrefs, I could see it's got a 15,000 rank, which is pretty good, 1.9 million backlinks, lots of referring domains, and it actually ranks for eight keywords right now related to web templates. So this one is kind of a zinger here, if I might say so myself. It's got lots of rankings. It's got lots of backlinks. You can even see what the backlinks are from, see if they're relevant. We could take a look at the movements and see if it ranked for anything really, really popular, which it did okay. And it's got some rankings that are pretty recent. Nothing super big, but the fact that this actually has to do with templates and it is freewebtemplates.com means it's pretty damn good. Now, if I find one that looks good, I could go to the GoDaddy appraisal tool right like this. I could put it in and see what GoDaddy appraises the domain at. For this one, it says it's worth 5,500 bucks or pretty close to $5,500. Now, when you're looking at the GoDaddy appraisal tool, take it with a grain of salt because it's not always absolutely accurate because at the end of the day, your domain is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. That's a fact. So if we go back to our Spamzilla here, we can click this and see that the domain is on GoDaddy auction, which means we will have to buy this at auction to be able to get it. Right now, it's got five days left and it's going for $1,034. Now, if I could buy this domain right now for $1,000, I'd buy it. But chances are five days left, this thing's gonna go for like 10, 15, maybe even $20,000, which means if you knew how to buy this before people knew it was available, you would have made a lot of money, which is why you need to watch this entire video at least one time all the way through, preferably two times if you're taking notes. So this one may or may not fit our criteria depending on what we have, because you might not have a thousand or $20,000 to risk on a domain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and look for this symbol here. This symbol means the domain is expired. So rcblaze.com, we could see has lots of good AHRF stuff, has a good domain rating. It's got a couple of backlinks and it had some rankings. So we can go to the movements and see what it ranked for. RC Army, Blaze RC Truck, Big Wheel. Looks like all kinds of stuff for different types of RC cars, toys, buggies, different stuff like that. Now, it didn't rank that great. Like, I'm not seeing any number ones, twos, or threes in here. But there's a 25 there. That's pretty good. A road buggy. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to check the backlinks and see if they're relevant. If these backlinks have to do with RC stuff or from different stores or toy stops or directories or something like that, then we might be in business. In this case, it's kind of a dud. But the domain rcblaze.com is pretty short, memorable, so this might be worth picking up. So I could go here, 
type it in Namecheap, see if it's available. And then I have to ask myself, is this worth $9? Well, I do like these rankings here, this RC Blaze kind of stuff. I would want to check copyright, which we'll get into in a little bit, but it does look pretty solid. So we could do a search for Blaze RC Truck, and we could see all kinds of different stuff like that. It looks like it might be related to the Blaze TV show, and it looks like these are available other places. So what I would do is I would try to see if the word Blaze is in the domain names that are out there and see if it is a trademark. But if it's not a trademark, yeah, for me, this would probably be worth $8. I could buy it and try to sell it, or I could buy it, build those old rankings up and do a drop shipping site and then sell it. It just depends on what I'm looking for. So that one's pretty decent. I think for nine bucks, I'm gonna snag that. So the first thing you can do is sort by domain rating. Second, what I like to do is look at the Ahrefs positions. Now, you're gonna see some of these when you sort by position where they're just gonna have ridiculous amounts of rankings like this one here. Chances are this domain probably got hacked at some point and it's a bunch of garbage rankings. And we can find that out by looking at the movements and looking at the structure of the domain. This is very important because when we see stuff like mjog.whatever, see all these different subdomains, that means this probably did get hacked and they put a bunch of junk on it. So unless there's like some good number one rankings standing out, I'm gonna ignore this one, especially because it's a .it rather than a .com, .net, or .org, which is primarily what I'm interested in unless the rankings justify otherwise. Now, when using my Spamzilla tool, which we'll have some more training on Spamzilla below, and you could get this at Spamzilla.com, which is my affiliate link, so I think I make like $3 when you get Spamzilla, but hey, it's a good tool, right? We could go through and we can actually get this criteria and say, hey, I don't want these country ones. I just want .com, .org, .net, and .info. And then when I hit search, what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna see these results. So we could go through and also say, hey, I don't want any auction ones either. So I'll turn off the marketplace ones and I'm just gonna get the pending delete or just the expired. Now, when I apply this filter, this is just gonna show me the expired stuff. So I could see here like simplewebsiteidea.com, that's pretty good, that's sellable. Some kind of slab travertine, maybe if that has good rankings, I can sell it to uh, someone doing travertine counters, I think is what that is. Um, and then we can kind of go through and look at these and see what's available that's decent. Or using the same filter, I can go ahead and put something in specific if I want something like make money I can type money up here. Then I can see here like Sunny Money LLC. I wouldn't buy that for the domain alone, but maybe it had some rankings. Well, let's take a look, see if there's any spam, see if there's any junk or anything we can build on. Seven backlinks, that's not a zinger, but if the movements have to do with making money, this could be something I can build from. This looks like it's mostly junk. It is nothing that good here. It's all over the place nothing really that I want. So we keep looking. We could do moneyprolive.com. All right, that's sellable. I could sell that for 10 bucks, no problem. Money Pro Live to some live streamer who's talking about money or whatever it is. We could take a look at the movements, see if that's good, uh, kind of go through. Now the movements here, this looks like a bunch of junk. See how this is like PHP files? I don't really want this, but moneyprolive.com. Yeah, I could sell that. I think I could probably sell that for the name alone. So again, I'm going to buy that for 10 bucks. Now, again, remember, if I sell this for $10, I'm already $1 and two cents in profit. And I don't think it would be that hard. We're going to show you some tips on how to sell these and a zinger tip on how to basically give these away and get paid a hundred bucks to give them away. Stay tuned for that. You're going to love it, but I'm going to pick that one up. Now, we can do the same thing if we want to do like reviews, if you want to see old review sites, and on and on we go. Now, if you want a list of these trigger words, check out domaintoolbar.com. I got all kinds of trigger words and tools and different things like that that are going to help you with this. So we can see here like tacticalflashlightreviews.net. 
that's decent France travel reviews. And again, this one I would only buy if it had some rankings on it. So we're going to check the Ahrefs and see what's out there. Um, this one, it'd be pretty easy to sell if it has specific rankings or movements based on different tactical flashlights and stuff like that. And yeah, this, this is decent, right? I had a number one ranking for TAC 25, uh, Fen review. So is it a zinger? No. Is it worth nine bucks? Yeah, I think so. I could build it up and do that. And again, hopefully this is answering the question about whether to build them or whether to sell them on their own. Now, I will caveat here that the rankings do drop. So 2021, and then they start dropping down here. So it's not like a crazy zinger, but we can check and see if the backlinks were fitting for whatever it is we want to use them for. And in this case, it looks like different business directories, which, eh, anyone can do that. Not too concerned with that. But the rankings do make it, in my opinion, worth $9. We have anti-gravity chair reviews. And of course, when we're doing this, we can always hit the domain rating and see which ones have the better domain ratings because usually these are the ones that are going to have more rankings like golf trolley reviews, guitar playing reviews, stuff like this. And if they fit, if there's a fit between recent rankings that were good and the domain type, then we're looking pretty good. Like if this guitar playing one had rankings for like how to teach an elephant to eat peanuts, that's not going to fit because it's not really there. So like how to tune a guitar without a tuner for beginners, that's okay. Only 30 searches a month. But then we got like this weird stuff, which is where it got spammed. Now I might overlook the spam if we see lots of guitar stuff start to pop up again. Guitar lesson reviews, ways to learn guitar. This might be worth salvaging. I actually think it is. This is definitely definitely worth salvaging, especially since it's like guitarplayingreviews.com. I can sell that for 10 bucks, no problem, even without content on it. So we'll just go over here and add that to our name cheap as well. And boom, there we go. Nine bucks, we're in business. So when we're looking at this, we need to check expired, check our Spamzilla, check other search sites, moz.com, check out Ahrefs free website authority checker, and then also take a look at this keyword tool, which I'll link in the description and you can find at keywordsniffer.com. This is actually an inexpensive tool. It's like 300 bucks a year or 15 bucks a month or something like that. And we could actually go through and do competitive analysis, which is what we want. Very important. So I can do organic keywords on competitive analysis. I can type in something like dan.com, which is a major domain seller. I can hit enter and I could see domains that are available on dan.com and I can actually find related domains that's going to work really well. I actually did this when I found scooterpals.com because I found out someone had Scooter Pal on Dan and I was able to take that domain from eight bucks and sell it for 6,500. So when I do dan.com, we can see here what domains are actually ranking. So we have like fitness.net. And you can click here and see what they're selling for, which is pretty cool. So fitness.net is on sale for $250,000. That tells me the word fitness is kind of a zinger. So I could go through, go to my Spamzilla and say, hey, I want fitness domains. Let's see what we got. Let's see how close I can get to fitness.net or .com. And I can kind of go through and see what's available. Again, we want something that is good, maybe uh, fitness goals, my fitness goals info. Yeah, I could sell that for more than the $3 it's going to cost over here. And I can also take a look at uh, what the rankings look like. So again, we're like multifaceted, like an octopus out there trying to get our hands in everything, trying to understand what's going on and get the best success chance. Now this one, this got hacked. It's all Brazil stuff. If I'm going to buy this, it's going to be because I think I can sell my fitness goals info for more than $4. Do I think I can? Well, uh, .net for 10, .org for 7. Yeah, I, I probably could, but again, don't go hog wild buying a thousand of these thinking you're going to flip them all for for 4 bucks or 5 or 10 or whatever. You got to be precise about this 
and you got to conserve money if you don't have a bunch of money to risk. Now, if you have a bunch of money to risk, yeah, you could buy a bunch of them and play the odds. But again, that's risky. You could lose everything. Chances are you probably won't lose everything, but you could lose money. You got to look at that. That is a fact. Now, this fitness one, maybe, maybe not. If I only had a hundred bucks, I probably would not add that to my cart. I would look at some others here. Maybe something like fitness form, maybe that would work. I could take a look at the backlinks on that. And again, sometimes you'll find that some stuff is, is really, really good. We got fitness life stories. That could probably sell. Uh, allaccessfitness.org, fitness sweel, I don't know what that is. Fitness tips lovers, fitnessdaily.com findfitnessdaily.com. Okay, I was a little excited thinking it was just fitness.com or fitnessdaily.com. So we can go through and kind of see what's out there. Say, okay, well, maybe I'll do fitnessfrequent.com or home fitness resources. That could be good. Like whenever I see something like this, it could have been a blogger that just didn't know how to monetize his blog, which means I could swoop in and make lots of money with this, which is actually pretty cool. So 40 backlinks, that's decent. We can go to the movements, see what's out there, and nothing nothing for movements, so that's junk. News for fitness, fitness Wikipedia, not a whole lot coming up here, but sometimes you do have to dig for the goods if you wanna make the money. Fueling your fitness, this might be good for like supplements and things like that. We got my crunch that's probably going to be a trademark issue fitness for fighters uh homefitnessbody.com we got real fitness blog that could work let's see what they got so i'm just going to look at these backlinks 197 movements okay it's okay stuff about fitness and food and stuff like that so it could be decent uh, boot camp finishers, metabolic finishers. All right, so that could be decent. Is it worth the nine bucks? Yeah, probably. That's for fueling your fitness. Let's take a look at the movements for a uh, real fitness blog and keep watching this entire training because I'm purposely not going to buy some of these domains. You can go pick them up and flip them and let me know what you make. Okay, so this one we got different workouts push pull workout, most anabolic foods. Number 12 for that, 30. This is actually looking pretty good. Realfitnessblog.com. I can sell it. It's got some good rankings, some things I can build up. And I think this is actually pretty good. Now, realfitnessblog.com. I'm guessing I could probably get $50 to $100 just for the domain alone. Maybe even more. But let's, let's shoot small and see what's happening there. Now, we're gonna go through and we can put this into our GoDaddy appraisal right here like this, realfitnessblog.com, make sure the spelling's right. So this is saying it's worth a thousand bucks. Again, this isn't always the best criteria because real health secrets, simple fitness tips, these are kind of all over the place, but they are selling. So yeah, I think getting a hundred dollars for this domain if I'm willing to sit on it for a year or, you know, actively, aggressively go out there and sell it, I think I can do pretty good. So heck yeah, I'm going to buy that one. Can I sell it for 10 bucks? Of course I can. Can I build it and sell it for $500? Yeah, most definitely. So obviously I'm going to buy that one. And then again, going back to our dan.com example, which is again, remember how we found this one. We could see here some other stuff. We got uh, banners, we got fitness, we got VIP file, uh, brb.com, Lawrence Real Estate, Training Center, right? We can go through and kind of find those, those really good keywords that we can use to find other domains. And a lot of times what we could do is search these by volume or traffic, because obviously the more traffic that goes to a domain, the better we're gonna do. So we could do like safe room, I don't know why that one is selling for a lot, but hey, you know what? Sometimes what I think sells a lot doesn't. So saferoom.net, maybe .org isn't taken. Um, and again, you don't even need a keyword tool to do this. We could just do saferoom, see if .net is taken. Okay, .net's on sale for a lot. Maybe we could do like safe rooms. 
maybe that'll work or safer room, you know, something like that might work. And we just want to get creative with this and see what's out there and see what's selling. Very important. So here we could see like safe room, uh, safe room kits.com. That's kind of cool. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Safe room kits.com. I'll bet that's got some of a value, but for me, I'm starting to think like, oh, I could use that for like, you know, baby proofing a room or something. And the value on that is pretty good. And, you know, I, it might have backlinks even though it's not showing up, which could be pretty cool here. Yeah, this is actually ranking. I, I can use this one and this is definitely something I would pay $9 for. And let's see, is it nine bucks? There we go, it's nine bucks. Let's add that bad boy to the cart. So I hope this is showing you how I look at this and we're gonna go in and talk about how to sell these. Again, this is like a full on course. So sit tight, get some popcorn and some coffee. I don't know if those go well together, but sit tight and learn. So other things we can do is we could check major topics. We could check trigger words. We could look at like dan.com or we could even go through and look at like local stuff like limos. Now, using the expired domain tool is usually the best way to do this. We could just type limos in here, and oftentimes there's going to be a limo company that went out of business. We could snag their domain. So we got like airports-limos.com, uh, limo service Dallas, Texas, limo service ratings. That's actually pretty damn good. Limo service ratings, I'm thinking I can make a big site about rating limo services. So we could go through there, see what's going on, limoserviceratings.com. That could be a really good site to build out. So notice how I'm looking at these and I'm like, hey, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these yet, but I got some ideas. And this one I could build out, some of the others I could sell, some of them I can sit on for a while, but I have to kind of look at this and understand exactly what's going on. Limo service, that's a city in Los Angeles that can work. Limos in Napa cheap Chicago limos. Some of these would be easy to sell. And again, you just have to look at it and say, what's the chances I get my nine bucks back? If it's like, obviously I'll get it back, then of course I'm gonna buy it. If it's a question, I might not buy it. So I gotta really be specific about what I want. And sometimes you're gonna have to go way back to find some zingers, like maybe we'll go back here and see Rock City limos. Yeah, if there's a place called Rock City, boom, that'll be an easy one to sell. Um, so I just have to kind of go through these and, and look at what we're going to do. Limos in a Miami.com that probably won't sell, but maybe 11 limos.com, you know, we got to kind of look at this and say, what is it we're going to do with them and then see, uh, whether we're going to do the backlinks or whether we're going to buy it just for the name alone. Okay. So very important. We can also look at like homes, Vegas homes or whatever, or you could even go through and do Vegas. We could see Las Vegas cheap cars, Las Vegas pool cleaning, that's a .org. And we can kind of go through and see uh, what people are looking for for Las Vegas. And sometimes you'll find a zinger. So that's gonna cover pretty much how we're going about finding a good name and what tools we use to find them, how we think about it and everything like that. Some other things you might wanna take a look at is using the Estabot tool to find out evaluation before you buy the domain. You can also look at weird sites, like there's some weird sites out there if you do the domain and then the word valuation or something like that. Sometimes you can actually find out different valuations based on traffic. Like one of them I found for this paineraser.com had a valuation based on traffic. And sometimes if these sites do have traffic, you can get some kind of valuation. But again, it's not super accurate. I would say that Ahrefs or whatever keyword tool you're using is gonna be more accurate as well as like GoDaddy um, appraisal tool. But sometimes it'll be a little bit different. So you kind of have to go out there and make your own valuation based on the type of seller you're looking for because sometimes a domain might be worth like five bucks to you or 15 bucks, like the one that I got years ago, which was a .NET about a political topic, which to me wasn't worth much, but I was able to get $25,000 for it. So you kind of have to, you kind of have to look at this in a, in a roundabout way and understand exactly what's going on by looking at everything out there and also saying, well, what are the odds that I'll get my money back? And can I afford to lose this money? 
those are important questions to look at as well. So let's take some questions and we'll go into like the, the other stuff. We covered backlinks and things like that, uh, specific purposes like, okay, I'm going to buy a domain for a specific company to buy it or, uh, you know, something like that. So let's take a look at some other questions and then we'll get into the second part. Now, first of all, Barbara says, as a beginner, would you have a website for all your domains or would you just rely on selling them at GoDaddy or Cedo Auctions? Well, for this, I'm going to build websites where I see fit. So nerdgettingfit.com, I bought at auction and it was a good domain, right? We go over to GoDaddy and we do, or I'm sorry, Ahrefs and we do nerdgettingfit.com. And this one actually has lots of rankings. It had very good rankings when I bought it. But the domain at the time was really worth like 300 bucks because that's what I paid for it. Paid 330. That's what it was worth at the time. So for this, for me to build out is actually going to be a lot better because now I have lots of rankings on it. So for that example, some of them I'm going to build, some of them I'll sell. And what I do is I sit tight while I'm building it and sometimes I'll get an offer. One of the domains I was building out, I got an offer for 100 bucks, which was way too low, so I kept building it. Um, and sometimes these people will contact you, and you can sell the domains that way. But you can build them out, or you can just sell them. This works for both methods. Jude says, what's the difference between domain flipping and website flipping? Well, the difference there is, one, I buy the domain cheap. I try to flip it, just the domain, at auction. That's me making money on the domain alone. Website flipping is where I would build the website and then flip it. So you're actually adding to the value of the domain by building a website, getting rankings and stuff like that. Yap says, do you mean buying expired domain but without content? Yes, most of the time you are buying these without content unless you're buying them on like Flippa or buying the website from someone who's selling you the website. So... Sometimes you have to build it, sometimes you don't. Nine times out of 10, if you're just flipping domains, you're just gonna flip the domain as is without a website. Andrew says, uh, is this a well-known thing already with a lot of competition? Well, buying and selling domains has been around since like 1994. Um, you guys just watched me buy a bunch of domains that I think I could sell for more than I bought them for, and that's today in 2022. So you be the judge. If you think it's too competitive and you just want to go out there and watch videos about how to get free money for doing nothing automatically with no work and no internet or anything, then, you know, you could go watch those videos. But if you want a real business, pay attention to what you're learning here. Mama says, as a beginner, what type of domain should I start with in the domain flipping game? Well, as a beginner, I would look at your budget. We're going to go into how I buy these um, at auction on GoDaddy in just a minute. So we're going to look at that, right? Brandable or domains for local businesses. You can do these. There are some sites out there uh, where you can sell these as a brand with a logo and things like that. Um, so it depends on what you're willing to do. If I could buy them for 8 bucks and sell them for $16, i will do it all day every day. Hopefully... I'll buy a bunch and, you know, one of them will sell for 10000 or whatever, or maybe a bunch of them will sell for a couple hundred or whatever it is. So I got to play the odds and I got to look at what I want to do. And if it doesn't sell, then you start adding brands and logos and stuff to it. But I'm going to try to sell it easy, quick first. Kevin says, if I purchase a .com name, would the potential value increase if one were to purchase the same .org and .net? Potentially, Yes. Um, most cases, no, but potentially yes. Okay. Sean says I've taken other domain flipping courses in the past and never saw a return on my investment. What can I expect from your course? Well, you could expect to do some work. Like if you bought courses and you're expecting to see a ROI without actually doing the stuff, you got to do the stuff. And uh, you know, there's a risk. There's it's a business. You got to get out there and you got to do it. And what I would advise doing, if you're sitting on a bunch of domains from a different course, Watch the second part of this video. Uh, specifically, I think it's part D, part D down here, uh, aggressive sales methods. That's going to show you how to go out there and aggressively sell your domains if they're not selling on their own, which I think is really important. Okay, so that's a good one to look at as well. Um, we have Chris says, how much have you made in a month flipping domains? I think 
50 to 60,000 was my biggest month flipping domains. Um, don't quote me on that because I have lots of businesses, so I don't exactly know the best month I ever had, but I think it was around 50 to 60,000. So really cool. And, and you know, it's funny because I got back into domain flipping uh, last year in 2021. I just got bored and I started flipping domains again and I forgot how much I liked it. And as if by magic, people contacted me and like the $6,500 one, I didn't put at auction. I didn't go out there and try to sell. They contacted me. Um, and that's happened with like five or 10 domains over the last couple months where people are contacting me to buy the domain. And, you know, I'm kind of like the king who gets to name my price and hopefully they'll take it. And most of the time they do, which is pretty cool. All right. So we got to check out if there's a good name. And Joseph says, do you ever bid on domains strictly for the name only? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. And sometimes I'll do that in GoDaddy. And what I'll do is I'll look at GoDaddy auctions, which I had open somewhere around here. Here it is. I think I got to log in again. And on GoDaddy auctions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the value of the domain and see if I can flip it. So like book tab, could I flip it for more than 260? Maybe, maybe. I mean, probably if I sat on it long enough, I could. But again, 260, that's a lot to risk. I could go buy, you know, 10 or uh, 20 domains at $8 for the same 260 and my odds are a lot better that I'll, I'll get my money back. But this one, you know, maybe you can sell it for a couple grand or something. Um, so we got to look at that. Also, I'm going to look at the traffic and I'm going to take these and put these into my Ahrefs tool as well and see if there's anything organic keywords or movements or backlinks. I'm going to take a look at that with my GoDaddy auctions as well. The fact that this didn't rank number one for the word book tab is kind of disheartening. But, you know, it is mem memorable, memorable, so I think it could be a good one. Um, and then we could take a look at some others. Now, usually when you look at the traffic column, that's going to tell you that there was ranking. So usually if I do like core genetics, it's got 38 traffic, which means it probably had some rankings, I'm guessing. Um, and let's see here. Sometimes it's a little slow, but yeah, we could see here it did have some rankings. So we can kind of take a look at that and say, okay, do I want those rankings? Is it something that I want? And usually when I'm looking at these, I'm going to look at them for something that fits the healthy you. Yeah, that could work. I don't like the two Y's next to each other for selling this as a domain, but maybe it's got some good rankings, uh, for health stuff. And if it fits, if it's in correlation with the domain, I could be doing pretty good. This one, the rankings, yeah, it's not worth it to me. Um, would that one be worth 437? Probably not. Not to me, at least. Uh, boost your health, that's it's a little bit better. No traffic, it is expensive. Um, top profile, right? And we can go through and take a look at the stuff, power stocks. All right, so if this ranked for a bunch of stock stuff, then yeah, that could be totally worth it because stock stuff is expensive. Powerstocks.com uh, is sellable, but no movement. So, you know, maybe I'd buy it for the domain alone. And again, would it sell for more than 325? Well, right now it's selling for 325. So we have to keep that in mind as well. So we're going to go through and take a look at these auto care, stuff like that. What I'd like to do more importantly is I want to go through and show you the domains that I bought at GoDaddy, the ones that I won at auction, why I bought them, and why I was willing to pay the price. So Natural Health Maven, I bought this because, hey, you know what? It ranked for all kinds of health stuff. Natural Health Maven, it is sellable. So worst case scenario, I could probably sell it. But I like the fact that it had a bunch of recent rankings and a bunch of current rankings. So like right now, it's ranking for this stuff, which, hey, I could use this. I could build this up. I could easily sell it. Uh, OwnMyOwnHomeNow.com, um, 97 bucks. Yeah, I figured, okay, I could probably get 97 for the domain on its own. So I'm pretty safe there. And then it also had some rankings and some backlinks for uh, owning your own home, which, yeah, I could build this up and, and do well with it. Um, some others, Ultra Lawn Care. I bought that because of backlinks and also ultralawncare.com. I could sell that to the right person with the right branding. 
I could probably get 2,000 bucks, 1,500 bucks, or at least 1,000 bucks for that. Again, results not typical, implied, or guaranteed. That's just my 22 years of experience, what I think I could get for that. This beach condo one was all about the backlinks. Paintball gun manuals, this was all about backlinks, and I was thinking, hey, check this out. This is about paintball guns. I can make a drop shipping site. I can make a website on this. I could build this up and sell it no problem at all. Best cheap paintball guns. Yeah, I like that ranking. Uh, paintball guns at rank number 56. Um, electric paintball gun, all kinds of stuff. So this was a good one for me. I liked it. 135 bucks, I think, was a steal for that. HomemadeSolarPanels.net, paid 12 bucks for that. Uh, I was looking for solar ones. Automated FBA. Automated FBA, I primarily bought because automated, um, fulfilled by Amazon, that's a pretty good domain for people looking for automated Amazon guru stuff. Pretty damn good. I like that one. I know I could sell that for more than 300 bucks to the right person. Uh, some others I bought at auction, uh, Banner Designer Pro. I like that. Uh, E-Tech Blogs, Virtual Mediation Lab. That had some backlinks and rankings. Um, concrete resurfacing. Core Fitness Nutrition. That was a good one. Serenity. This one I believe I bought for um, recovery rehab stuff, which pays a fortune. Um, I think that was a really good one. As far as selling that, could I sell Serenity-Cove? Probably not. Not without a site on it. Organic-Gardening.net. Backlinks. SoberSlayer.com. Backlinks and sellability. I know I could sell that for more than 30 bucks, and I know I can put a site on it about sobriety uh, that, that'll that do really well as well. So a lot of these, when I buy these, we got to understand what's going on. Peer Dog Treats, um, Helmet Town. I don't remember what I was thinking with that one, but, you know, whatever. It might be good. Uh, remodeling. This one was actually an old musician guy. How to Keep Her. This had lots of rankings and backlinks, uh, which was pretty cool. The Sober Slayer, I believe, had some movements on it. I don't remember. Let's see. Yeah, Sober saying, like, I like this. This is good stuff. I could build an AA uh, recovery site and make a lot of money. And then worst case scenario, I could sell that for 30 bucks. No questions asked. Um, here's another one about relationship stuff. That was pretty good. How to Keep Her. Can I sell that domain? Maybe, maybe on its own, but with the backlinks, it's definitely uh, worth the 209 I paid. Inspiring counseling, definitely. I could resell this one uh, for a lot. And on and on we go. So you could see uh, why I buy these, what I buy them for, sixpackgym.com, totally resellable. I could sell that for a thousand bucks tomorrow uh, to the right person because six pack and gym, short domain, easy, good stuff. We could do this in the GoDaddy uh, appraisal tool, and I guarantee this will be like a thousand bucks or so. So, pretty good, 1286 on that one. Um, and I think that's probably an accurate one. Like these are very similar, so it is very accurate when we're looking at it. And then I think it did have um, some movements as well for six pack gym. So it's kind of like a double whammy there. Uh, which was pretty cool, All right? So yeah, I'll take it, especially for the amount I paid on it. So really good there. That's what we're looking at with GoDaddy Auctions. Um, Optical says, how long did it take you before you started generating real money? Well, this is going to depend on what you're doing and how aggressive you are. When I sit back, sometimes I get bids in a month without doing anything. Sometimes it takes a year, like the one I got 25 grand for. It took a year to sell. Um, but I wasn't actively selling it. If I went out there, actively sold it, I pretty probably would have gotten a lot less money, but it would have sold a lot quicker. So we got to really, you know, look at what our risk tolerance is. Krishna says, which website gives you the most accurate and stable appraisal of a given domain? I'm going to say somewhere between GoDaddy and Estebot, because Estebot's going to give me a lot of goose eggs, which, you know, I've sold goose eggs for a lot more. Um, so we're going to look at that. I would say the right answer to this is going to be watching this entire video two or three times all the way through so that you can learn and see why I buy what I buy, because that's going to be accurate. Nine times out of 10, I'm going to be really accurate on my pricing. Um, 
and, 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 and that's because of what I've been doing and how long I've been doing this. So very important. Terrence says, what's your strategy in evaluating backlinks? Um, that's going to be a Ahrefs nine times out of 10. You can also use SEMrush. Uh, you can use um, keywordsniffer.com has a good tool if you're looking for a budget. So what we're going to do is we're going to check our backlinks, look at the value of the backlinks. Um, when we were looking at nerd getting fit, right, not all backlinks are equal. We need relevant backlinks and we need good backlinks. So one of the things that made me pay 300 for this domain was one, looking at the movements, right? Because I know if it ranked before and it ranked recently, it can rank again. But then I also saw NBCnews.com, like this sucker's got a backlink on NBCnews.com. Boom, that right there is worth money to me. Like you can't pay them. Well, you probably could, but it wouldn't be 300 bucks, right? We can't pay them to get that ranking and boom, here it is um, right there. Like I, I'm there, I bought this site and now I rank, right? Uh, he had a nerd getting fit somewhere in here. There's a link, I think it says nerd getting fit or something like that. There it is right there. And that's linking to my site. So now I have a link from NBCnews.com to my website which is as valuable to me as long as it's a good link. And then we gotta, we gotta understand that, right? So value backlinks, Vin says, how to get an old domain name to get ranking as fast as possible. Well, what you're gonna do like this one, I actually, if you look at the movements, I got this ranking within days. Like if you go back to when I bought this, I think it was in November. Uh, let's see, we'll go back to November. You can actually see, so this is where it started losing rankings. And then it went up on auction in November or October or something like that. And you'll see the glitch, right? See every day, 18, 17, 16. And then the glitch when I took it over was, was it October or November? October. October, so we're going to see a glitch, October 13, 7, 9, and then the glitch will be from the time it dropped to the time I got the rankings back, and I think it was like three days, it was like September 7 or something, yeah, 9 to 10, it's somewhere around here, but it, it was a couple of days, I'd have to find exactly when it was, um, but it wasn't long, it was like two or three days uh, where I took it over to the time we actually got the rankings back and we actually got really good rankings too. Okay, Cafe says, or Kate says, uh, do exact match domains still work for SEO? They do and don't. Like you can't get the exact match and then expect it to rank. Are they still marketable? Yes. So it does help, although not like much, and they are still marketable, absolutely. But it depends. Like, can I rank you know, how to lose weight fast overnight drinking juice.com. Probably not lose weight fast. Yeah, I could sell that. So it depends on the word. Brandon, if a domain fully expires and it's available at base cost, does it mean everyone who is sharp, let it pass by the auctions? Not always. Sometimes it's just the way the cookie crumbles. What I would say is I don't care. All I want is stuff that I can sell and I can use. I don't care what other people are doing. Far too many people in internet marketing, they care about what the gurus do. They care about other, forget about what other people are doing and focus on what you're doing and how you're gonna make money. Um, and if I find a zinger, I don't care if it passed through some other guy or some other guy gave up on it. I'm gonna buy it because I think it's a zinger and I think it's worth money. And that goes into the specific purpose of why you're buying these. Are you buying them for a local business? Uh, for a brand name with old links, something you may want like .com, .net, or .org. Um, and, and we have to look at, okay, are people are going to want this? Are people going to want this? Um, and that's when maybe I'll swoop in and get a .com or a .net if they have the .com or a .com if they have the .net or whatever it is, depending on how it works. And I will tell you, even though I swear by .coms, the most expensive domain I ever sold was a .net which, you know, sometimes 
I got to do the research. Even though I've been doing this 22 years, I still got to do the research. I'm still not an expert on everything. I got to be teachable. I got to be learnable. I got to be willing to, to take the hits and understand what's going on. And I got to be willing to be wrong. Because sometimes when I'm wrong, I get big paydays because I'm not going to bat for the fact that I'm wrong. Right? If the ego gets in the way, I'll go, oh, I already know that. Yeah, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't already know that. Most expensive domain. It was a .NET. I didn't think it would sell. Um, I didn't buy it to resell it. I bought it for me. And then I just ended up not using it. It was one of the ideas I had. And I didn't think it would sell. I almost let it expire. It was going to expire a month after I sold it for $25,000. So there you go. If I let ego get involved, I probably would have just let it expire and said, I know best. But I didn't know best. I sold it. All right, um, Adele Adekali says, how long can someone wait to flip the purchase domain? As long as you want. Nader says, or Narender says, sorry, my screen is small. Narender says, how do you transfer the domain to the buyer? Well, we're going to get into that, but usually you're just going to do a domain transfer. So you go into your domain where you bought it, and you click transfer, and you make sure that you get paid first, and then you transfer the domain. Or you can use an escrow service. But transferring is as easy as if they're on the same register, you just enter their username and hit transfer, or you can give them the code, but don't give them the code until you have the money, because if you don't have the money, they can take the domain with the code. So, very important. Uh, Jeff says, do you have on any idea what percentage of domains for sale never get sold? I have no idea. I don't think anyone knows that. Uh, Fred, same question. Ben says, do you only recommend buying expired? No, I buy new domains. Uh, some of the new domains, the $25,000 one, the $6,500 one, those were new domains. Those were not expired. I bought them because I thought they were uh, good names. Um, pluralizing, yeah, we went over that already. Uh, if you can get flowers.com, absolutely, or bestflowers.com or whatever. Um, and again, using that, you're going to go in and you can, you can get ideas using Spamzilla or whatever, um, and then you can, you can use these with your own mind and say, well, maybe I can do uh, sendflowersnow.com or, um, you know, whatever. You can go in and get a little creative with it based on what you think will sell. Very important. Now, it's a little bit more risky because sometimes it's like, okay, what I think will sell might not exactly sell. And, you know, like right here. Okay, uh, send flowers. Let, let's find a good one. Uh, maybe we have like fast pitch flowers or web flowers buy or um, linger flowers or whatever it is, right? You might see that like sendflowersnow.com might be available. And then you might be like, oh, well, hey, I think it's worth a lot. And GoDaddy says it's worth a lot, but maybe it's not. Or sendflowerstoday.com. Maybe they'll say it's worth a lot, but hey, you know what? At the end of the day, if I get send flowers to you, let's see if we spell right, to you.com, okay? Send flowers to you.com. GoDaddy says it's worth a thousand bucks, but I could buy it on GoDaddy right now for 19 cents. So is it worth a thousand or 19 cents? That's why you got to look at this box. Nothing about flowers. I don't have good data. Um, sell home, nothing about flowers. So maybe I'd go through and say, well, maybe I'll just do like send flowers and then maybe I'll get a better result. Sendflowers.info, hundred bucks. So if sendflowers.info went for a hundred bucks and give flowers went for 12 grand, I got to kind of look at that and say, well, you know, maybe my idea isn't really worth that much. So we have to keep that in mind, or maybe it is. Look at the guide, look at your tools, um, and focus. All right, Alex says, how do you evaluate a domain that's worth buying? I think we covered that already. I love this strategy. What search parameters do you use to find domain names that would perk the interest of TikTok marketers? Okay, Danny, I love this question. You win the question of the day um, because this goes into aggressive strategies. Right, so what could I do to perk the interest of TikTok marketers? Well, what I would do is I would go over to TikTok, I'd look at the categories, and I'd find something small, right? Like just, I started a TikTok a couple days ago, 
and I got affiliatemarcus.com. Simple, easy, to the point. So maybe you could do like bobateeguy.com or uh, maybe you could do like funnycarvideos.com or something like that. We would want to get small, short, concise, to the point domains and then pay attention to my strategy on how to sell it because a lot of these TikTok guys, they just use the free or paid version of Linktree, which guess what? If you can make them a better version, give them a domain for free and get paid a hundred bucks to do so, how many times a day would you want to do that? More about that later, which is why you want to keep watching this big video. So um, that's what we're looking at there. We went through, we bought some domains. I want to show you some more. Uh, these are some domains that I bought last night and I bought these for some of my students and some of them I bought for myself. And I want you to look at why I bought them. Business, businessgrowthinsiders.com. Um, I bought this one because of the fact that it had some backlinks and it used to be a podcast. So when I go through, I'm like, hey, check this out. Um, this used to be a podcast, which I could go through and be like, okay, I could build this up and I could get some, some juice here because it's got backlinks. It had some rankings. So was it worth eight bucks? Yeah, I, I think definitely. Business Growth Advisor, uh, Business Growth Insiders Podcast, Anthony Robbins YouTube. This has some good rankings, which are totally, totally worth the money to me. Like, not even funny. There it is. Business growth. This is worth money. Very important. Um, that's why I bought that for uh, $8.88, as it were. Next, the Mission Marketer. Again, this was a backlink one. Um, investmentsecurity.org. I thought that was good. I think I could sell it as is, but it also had backlinks. Um, outsourceprofitmachine.com. I could sell that. Yeah, I mean, definitely get my eight bucks back, I think. Again, results not typical, implied, or guaranteed. But I think with the backlinks, um, and, you know, it has a little backlinks. Like, in terms of backlinks, this is worth, like, five bucks. Um, but it did rank for Profit Machine, which, hey, there you go, right? Um, but I think in terms of the actual domain outsource Profit Machine, I can use it, I could sell it. I could, I could probably build it and rank it and put a resale rights product on it and sell it for 500 bucks or something. Pretty easy. Or, you know, maybe I could just put it at auction and, and see what I get. But I think I definitely have more than 888 uh, for that one. List Profit Generator, I got that because of the name. Makeafamilytree.org, I thought that was good. It had some backlinks, um, some good stuff. Freelance Life Podcast. This was a podcast for freelancing. Freelancing stuff always sells. There's always a buyer for freelancing domains. Um, and this one ranked for like freelance life and stuff like that, which I thought was pretty cool. So worst case scenario, I build it up and, and sell ClickBank freelance stuff, right? All I need is one sale to get my money back. I probably double my money. I think I have one sale is like 16 bucks of those products. Um, so again, that's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to think like, where's my back out plan? If I can't sell this, what am I going to do with it um, while I'm waiting to sell it? So that's important too. Effective sleep solutions. Boom. That was a good one. Like I really, really like this because it has to do with um, sleeping stuff like mattresses and supplements and different things like that. And it ranked for uh, some insomnia stuff. Nothing huge. But it was a good domain. I thought, all in all, it's got some backlinks, so I could probably rank it pretty quick. And it does look pretty decent. Um, and these were about sleep solutions. Sleep, sleep, sleep. These were about um, sleeping products, which I thought was pretty good. I also got Retirement Savior. Boom. This one right here, I was like, yep, I could sell this for 1000 bucks. the domain alone. Right? It is Retirement Savior. That's a good one. That's like a product. People are like, oh, the retirement saver is going to save your retirement or whatever. Um, so definitely, definitely sellable as is. And I think it also had backlinks, which is pretty cool. That's like a double whammy. Like, oh, yeah, backlinks and I got this. We're looking pretty darn good. And yeah, look at money hackers, uh, financial advice. This is all relevant stuff. This I would have bought at auction. I would have bought this one at auction probably for 300 bucks, no questions asked. Um, but using these methods you learned today, 
is only $8.88. Uh, unless you go to GoDaddy, apparently they have them for 18 cents today. Uh, the power of not thinking. I like this one for uh, thought stuff. I was like, okay, cool. So the power of not thinking. Had some backlinks. A uh, little bit of rankings about like thinking and um, mindset and stuff like that. And that always sells. I know I can sell it. Um, the backlinks, eh, they're okay. I mean, nothing to write home about. The movements... I think was, yeah, this is where I bought it, the movements. Um, it had some movements for different tests and meaning of things. So it was a good one. You know, I, I thought it was kind of cool. There's some weird stuff in there, but overall it was pretty good. Um, we got Alternative WordPress, Alternative WP. If it was Alternative WordPress, I would not have bought it because they don't like you to use WordPress. But Alternative WP, totally. Like, I'm thinking I could sell massive amounts of hosting and, worst case scenario, this thing probably appraises for a thousand or more uh, as is because, boom, there you go. Alternative to WordPress, 1200 bucks. Alternative, um, these are going for a lot. Simple WP, this will sell. Very, very good. And I know this video is long, but I hope it's helping you understand this stuff because I want you to get in my head as to why I buy these. And again, remember, I could lose my money. I could lose my eight bucks, but I don't think I will. Uh, the alternative ideas, my pond software that had some good backlinks, credit connector. I had to check the spelling on that because I'm like, hey, that's a pretty damn good one uh, for credit. And I thought that was, was pretty decent. And our let's see what our appraisal is on that. Uh, credit connector. Anything credit's always going to sell. Um, and these are all about credit, which is good. So the more relevant these are to this, the more accurate the money's going to be. Because this is what has sold. People bought this stuff. You can't argue with a guy with money in his hand, right? If he's willing to buy it, there you go. Very important. Um, also, right time, right place does factor in. But if there's multiple, you're probably in the clear. Um, wake up fearless. I like this domain. I really like this. This one, I could probably sell for a thousand just because of the name to some, you know, mental health guru or whatever. Uh, CBD oil skincare had some good backlinks. Accountingcareersnow.com. I like this because accounting careers, like I could make an affiliate site um, about how to get into accounting, um, and there's lots of courses and things that'll sell a lot. Uh, for that, right? Career accounting. This is good backlinks. I like this. This is something I can probably uh, sell for maybe 300 bucks uh, as is, or I could probably build it out and sell for a thousand, two thousand, or whatever it is. Um, now, I do have a kind of a rigged game because I have an audience that buys these, which is why I go crazy. I mean, I spent probably $50,000 in the last couple months on domains. Um, and, and some of them I sell to people who don't know who I am. Um, but I do have a back end. So you're going to have to be a little bit more careful with what you buy if you don't have that back end uh, to be able to sell them. But what I'm going to show you in the aggressive steps is going to take care of that so that you always kind of have a back end. Like I look at it and I'm like, okay, the, the lot that I bought last night, I spent 146. What are the odds I'm going to get my 146 back? Probably pretty damn good. I think there's a couple of these I could sell for more than that on their own. So I think my odds are pretty good there. Um, and for you, even if you don't have a list to sell these to, you could sell them at auction. And I think your odds are pretty good too. Uh, looking at that as well. And then when we get into the aggressive stuff, it's going to be pretty good, which is now where we're going to get into the low risk selling hacks, how to sell your domains at auction or using my aggressive methods. So first let's take a couple questions and then we'll get into where and how to sell these. First of all, Jared says, how do you find a buyer? Uh, the obvious easy way is through an auction site. So you could use like um, Cedo, you could use Afternick, you can use GoDaddy Auctions, Namecheap. Lots of domain registers have their own auctions or their own places where you can sell these, or you can even point them at your own place and sell them yourself. So like I could redirect a domain to a PayPal link where they can buy the domain. Or uh, for me, I have a lot of my domains over at domains.blogprofitnetwork.com, which also you could check out and see uh, some of the ones that I've talked about here on this call. 
uh, which are pretty good as well. And you can buy them. Some of them come with sites and stuff like that. Uh, but what's cool about this is a lot of times when you have the domain and you have a site like this, when people Google the domain, uh, your site will actually come up. So like if they do a search for the domain itself, you can see that uh, my domain site will eventually start to come up for these, depending on the type of site, of course. Looks like some of these have too many backlinks, but if we do like the coupled domain, well, we gotta spell it right too. The coupled domain, um, there we are. So you can see here, it actually does rank um, and they can go there and buy it, which is pretty cool because then they're just like, hey, hey, I can buy this here. Um, you can also redirect them to your auction site, uh, whatever you want. And redirecting a domain is free. So you could just point it. Once you buy it, the uh, registrar that you buy it at will allow you to redirect that domain uh, for free. So you can find buyers that way or you can you know, go on the auction sites. Yasmin says, uh, I'd like to know if I purchase cheap domains, do I need to work on all of them to sell them off for a higher price? No, you don't. Um, we're buying these with the anticipation that someone will buy them at a higher price. So you don't have to create a website. Um, it will get you a better value most times, um, but sometimes it won't. There's plenty of people who just buy domains and sell them without building websites. Ken says, if GoDaddy appraises uh, the value at X and Estebot says it's lower, how do you value the domain? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at multiple factors here. Okay, I'm going to look at, first of all, GoDaddy. GoDaddy. There we go. GoDaddy. And I'm going to see what the relevant ones are. Okay, relevant. That says relevant. I'm going to look at what the relevant ones are. So if they're very relevant, like I mentioned earlier, then I'm going to go with GoDaddy's appraisal because that'll be right. Now, if I'm like creditscorehopper.com and it says you know, bunny hopper, bike jumps, cool bunnies, then those aren't related to my credit one. It's just using the word hopper. So I'm going to look at the relevancy. And first and foremost, if they're relevant, I'll probably go with GoDaddy's suggestion. Then I'm going to look at Estebot. And Estebot is going to be direct targeted based on what's sold in their database, which isn't going to show some of the relevant ones. So there's... If it gives you a value, it's probably dead on, but sometimes it's probably not, right? Like some of the ones that I sold for 6,500, Estebot said it wasn't worth anything. Like I got a goose egg, but I, I got $6,500 in my pocket. So I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna say, okay, what is it? Because at the end of the day, these are only worth what someone's willing to pay. Now, in the case where I did Scooter Pals, Dot com. All right, this one, GoDaddy said it was worth $1,100. Estebot said it wasn't worth much. Uh, this here wasn't that great, but what I did is I found out that I got lucky and I inadvertently bought this domain for a student of mine before the company bought their trademark. And before I even built this site up, I was like, hey, we got a buyer. You want to split it with me? Or do you want to go buy it and sell it on your own or whatever? And he ended up selling it to me and then I sold it. So technically I only made like four grand on it, but you know, he got two grand and he's happy and I got the difference and I'm happy. So you got to look at that. Uh, he got antsy and wanted his money quick. So I took the risk and I said, Hey, I'll give you two grand. If I make nothing, I'm out two grand. Um, but you know, to each his own. And so I looked at that, but like this here would have said 1100, I got 6,500. So we got to look at that. Now, a lot of these boats and bikes has nothing to do with scooters. So I would want to look at Scooter Monkey, Scooter Kids. Those are probably more relevant to that one. Um, now, the one I sold for 25 grand uh, was a political one, and it was something like End the Debt, something like that, End the Debt. Um, you can see these 2100, however it is for sale for more. Um, so you got to gotta look at that and say, well, what are we doing here? What is it and who's going to buy it? That's going to be how I value these things, which is important. Okay, uh, Fred, besides listing domains on aftermarket sites, what other methods are you using? We're going to get to that in a, me in a minute with D. Uh, Angela, where do I sell these domains and where do I flip them? GoDaddy is probably the quickest. What I would do, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, but what I would do is, is price them lower than I expect 
and do a short auction, like seven days, um, and see what happens. Paul says, which marketplace do you consider the best? I would say GoDaddy. It does sell a lot of domains. After that is probably After Nick and then Cedo. Um, so, you know, you got to kind of look at uh, on its own. But some of them will list them on other places too. Mark says, does the choice of web host matter? No. When selling domains, the web host does not matter. Um, if you're just selling a domain without a website, you don't even need web hosting, right? They'll, they'll let you redirect it and stuff like that. So very important. Um, I noticed some of your websites have a very simple design. Is that intentional? Yes. Simple sales. All right. Now let's get into pricing structure. Let's talk about how this works. When I look at a domain, let's, let's pick one at random here. Let's say we are going to use EffectiveSleepSolutions.com. All right, here's how I'm going to price it. I'm going to go to GoDaddy Auctions. I'm going to say, what is this worth? I'm also going to open up um, Estebot, right, like this, and we're going to look at Estebot. So we're going we're to look at these together. Effective Sleep Solutions, Effective Sleep Solutions. Now, this says it's 909. It's basing it on 1200 here. 350 here, 650, it's an average. Now, they're averaging it based on the word sleep, sleep solutions, advanced, innovative, that's for staff. So the most expensive one here is not related to sleep. That's important. Take that out. We're looking at a value of 400, maybe 500 max. So let's take a look at these. Living, health, sustainable, organic sleep, 549, Okay, so the only sleep ones are, are 695 and lower. Okay, so where they're getting 909, I don't know. Let's take a look at Estebot. Estebot says 100 bucks. So already, I spent nine. Estebot says 100. Yeah, I could probably sell it for 100, I think. Now, sleep solutions, this is pretty solid. Effective sleep solutions, those are good words. All right, so let's take a look at the authority checker, the free. Ahrefs Authority Checker, 4.7, linking websites, 34.17, good. Let's take a look at our uh, keyword tool that you can find over on keywordsniffer.com, and we'll see what this ranked for. Nothing here, so we're going to have to use Ahrefs. Now, I will tell you, even though I don't get paid to tell you to use Ahrefs, they are the only ones that have the movements tab, which to me, with domaining, you gotta have that. So I could tell you to get other stuff and I could make money off it, but if you really wanna make money with this, at the risk of losing money myself, I would say use Ahrefs because look, we could see this stuff. Um, so yeah, I would say if I was going to price this, I would probably put it in an auction. I'd start it at nine bucks and I'd see what it goes for. Because worst case scenario, I get my nine bucks back and then maybe it'll go higher. Now, as far as building this out, I like this domain to build it out. I could also do branding on the domain and sell it for even more. So we got to look at that. But if I was just going to sell this, okay, solution.com is for sale. So I'd probably buy that one too, okay? Um, but it's for sale for 19 cents. So yeah, I mean, I could probably get a hundred bucks for this Estebot. Yeah. I, I would say if I tried, I think I could now, if I built it and, and went for other people and other stuff, which we'll talk about, um, I could probably get more. Let's take a look at another and we'll price another one out. Uh, but I would say the safe, I know I can get a hundred bucks. I'm pretty sure. I think that's what we're looking at. Next, let's take a look at another one. Um, maybe we'll go for Retirement Savior. All right, Retirement Savior. So let's see if the old Retirement Savior has some domain authority. And we'll take a look at what it ranks for as well. And again, we're going to look at the movements because that tells me, hey, if it was moving, I could build this up. So we got motorcycle helmets. We got Retirement Retirement. There's some retirement stuff here. Senior living. Let's see if there's anything ranking now. Wait and wait and wait. Sometimes patience is good. So nothing ranking now, but it is a good one. I think the domain alone, 
I would say would sell pretty good. Retirement choice answers FAQ. Those are all solid. This is all, with the, with the exception of this one, we're looking all pretty much retirement. Let's see what Estebot says. Retirement savior, less than 100. So I'm not going to go with, with this one here. I think I could get more than 100 because, I mean, retirement answers, choice, FAQs, health savior, 488. I think I could, I think I could probably get a hundred bucks, you know, let's, let's shoot low. Uh, if I 10 X my money there, which is a little bit more than 10 X. Uh, if I bought it for nine bucks, I think I'm okay. Branding. I could brand this thing out and sell it for a lot more as well. So, and again, you never know, there could be a guy at auction. It could go nuts. People could want it. So what I have to do with my pricing structure is I have to look at my lowest acceptable offer. What am I willing to part with this domain for? Well, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, a hundred bucks, what am I willing to part with it for is important because that is your baseline. Now, will people be willing to buy it for that? That's when you get into assessing the value on Estebot and on GoDaddy. So we're gonna have to look at that as well. Then you have to look at, okay, am I gonna price, am I buying this to build it out? This is when you're buying these at auction. If I buy them at auction, there's a chance I could lose a lot more. There's some I've bought for 2,000 bucks at auction, $3,000 at auction. And I have to say, am I willing to lose that? And are other people bidding? If they're bidding on it, then it probably is worth it. So, you know, you have to look at that and understand it. But if I'm building it out, that's gonna help. Then we have to ask ourselves, who wants this domain? Is there someone else out there that would be like, okay, they have a sleep site and your domain would be better? Maybe go sell it to them. Uh, maybe there's other people who want sleep domains or mattress companies or whatever it is. And you could sell it as a marketing solution to them if you learn marketing, which smash the like button, subscribe, learn marketing here on my channel. Then you have to say, okay, well, where am I going to list it? Um, we can go and we can list this on like GoDaddy Auctions, After Nick, uh, Name Cheap. You can list it on your own site, as we mentioned. Um, I'll have a list below in the description with another video that talks about well, where to sell these. Allah says, I bought a few domain names I created. I think they're short and easy to remember, but not sure how to sell it for more money. Well, what I would do is I would, again, factor in what you think it's truly worth. Not the ego inflated, I think this is worth a million dollars because I'm so smart. No, no, no. The real world value right now, today, if you had to sell it today. Okay, that's important because... I could sit on it for a year, but that's not gonna tell me what I can get today. Very important, okay? Now, sometimes waiting a year is a good strategy if you could wait it out uh, with your money. Some people can, some people can't. Um, if you buy a thousand of these, that's 9,000 bucks. Can you sit on them for a year? Maybe, maybe not, and then next year, if you wanna keep them, it's another 9,000 bucks. Now, you don't have to buy a thousand, you could buy a hundred or 10 or whatever, uh, but I think this will really help you. Han says, once you've bought the domain, is there some way to promote the domain for sale to get it in front of more eyes? Yes, you could do sponsored listings. Uh, you could list it with GoDaddy. You could list it at auction sites. You could put it on your own website. Um, you can make your own domain buyers club if that's what you want. Uh, that's what I did with domains.blogprofitnetwork.com. Um, and you can do all kinds of stuff. But that's going to get us into the aggressive sales method, which is like, okay, maybe we could go out there and find out who has the .com, the .net, or the .org, or the .net and the .org, and maybe sell them the .com, or who has a similar domain, or who has a company that is similar, or whatever it is. Like if I get LasVegasLimos.com, I'm not stepping on any toes because... Las Vegas and limos are not trademark terms. So I could go out there, find a Las Vegas limo company, boom, sell it to them. Or uh, maybe I can find like those ones for, uh, you know, outsourcing money machine or whatever it was. I could find a guy who has an outsource course and sell it to him. So there's lots of ways I could get in there. And what I can do in that case is just email them to, hey, I noticed you had this domain. Are you interested in this one? I noticed you had this, are you interested in this? And you can build them out and get some traction. You can also uh, go in when you have your domain, I could just go in and hit manage. So guitar playing reviews, if I hit manage here, I can go in here 
and then I can actually set up a redirect. So if I set this up and I say, hey, I want this to go to my GoDaddy auction listing or a PayPal link where they could buy the domain, boom, there we go. Super simple. And then when I go to transfer it to them, I just hit on sharing and transfer and I could transfer it right to the person. Very simple, very easy. Um, so it's, it's a very easy business to run. There are some facets to it you need to understand. And you, it really comes down to like, what do I value this at? Why would I pick this domain? And what do I plan on doing with it? And what's my fallback plan? Because if you go out there and you have a fallback plan where you're like, okay, worst case scenario, I sell this for eight bucks, okay? Or nine bucks or whatever, eight ninety nine or whatever it costs me, okay? If there's a guaranteed way to recoup my investment, then I have nothing lost. And that's what I wanna look at. Like, is there a guaranteed way I could get at least $9 for every domain I buy. Yeah, I think there is if you really focus on it and understand it, right? So very, very important. We got to look at that. We got to understand it and say, what is my fallback? Maybe I can build it out. Maybe I could go to someone who has a similar domain. Maybe I could put it at auction and get 20 bucks or whatever it is. Focus on this because now I have an out. Or maybe I could sell it on my own site or whatever it is. That is the key because then your chances of losing money go down dramatically. But again, results not typical, implied, or guaranteed. You got to focus. This is a business. And before we get into the rest of the Q&A, which is going to really enlighten you on a lot of this stuff, I want to mention one of the really cool ways that you can make money aggressively other than just reaching out to people who have similar domains or trying to sell these on different websites, what you can do is you can actually go out there and find businesses or people that are doing similar stuff and you can offer them a free website. And you might be saying, well, Mark, as a free website, how am I going to make money? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to build the website, give them the domain in exchange for them signing up for web hosting, which is what they're going to need anyway so it's a win for you a win for them and you get a hundred bucks which is pretty cool and then of course you might have a client where you can manage it for them or help them get rankings or whatever it is and you already got a hundred bucks and you didn't charge them so they're gonna love you and then you could just charge them you know five bucks a month or whatever it is to maintain their stuff and help them out uh, which is pretty cool that's a really good way to go about this because lots of people are looking for websites and looking for help and if you could get creative and add on to the website I think that'll be pretty cool. Maybe you can give them a free lead capture page or a free WordPress setup or whatever it is in addition to the domain. And you can show them, hey, look, the GoDaddy domain appraises for $350 and all you have to do is get website hosting and I'm going to give you the domain free. Now, make sure that whatever domain hosting company you are an affiliate of, make sure that they're okay with this, which most of them usually are, but make sure uh, beforehand to make sure that you're going to get paid, right? Uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a good way to go about this as well. Now, let's go ahead and get into the Q&A, and then we'll wrap the video up. But I think this part is going to be very important, so get your notepad handy. Adrian says, what is the most efficient way to find out if a domain you buy is trademarked? Excellent question. What I do is I Google trademark search, and then I'll put the words in that trademark search and see if anything comes up. Also, if I want to be extra certain, I could go through the trademark office and figure out what's there, or I could even Google the words separated together and different variations to see if they come up. For example, if I Google Nike and I see Nike.com has trademark Nike, which they do, then I'm going to go through and be like, yeah, it doesn't matter what I have. I could have Nike elephant tanning salon, and it's still going to be a trademark issue because you know, Nike's got a lot of money to deal with trademark stuff. Um, some other places, a lot of trademark stuff has to do with confusion. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but as I understand this, uh, it has to do with confusion in the market. So sometimes you could get away with a similar name, but in a different market, right? So like maybe you have like SeaWorld and it's, you know, maybe shoes might not be the same as SeaWorld, the confusion of, yes, I have a theme park called SeaWorld. That would be an issue. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but that's how I understand it. Always consult a lawyer and do your research. Um, and it's best to stay away from trademark stuff just to be on the safe side. But of course, buying expired domains, you're probably going to run into these things at some point or another. And sometimes there's even trademarks that people used to have 
that they let expire or, or whatever. Or maybe you buy it before them. Make sure, if someone's claiming, make sure you do your research before you hand over the domain. Michael says, uh, would you recommend location-specific domains to sell to a local business? Absolutely. And I'll tell you, they're worth a hell of a lot more if you rank them. So that's what I would do. But, you know, if you want to just buy local stuff and sell them, don't go crazy. Go very specific. I know lots of people are like, I'm going to get every limousine company with this domain in the planet. And they spend 10000 bucks on domains and they wonder why they're not selling. Well, be strategic and specific. Like I showed you in the beginning, which is why you want to watch this again with the Las Vegas stuff and things like that. Pierre, when buying or selling a domain, what is the easiest way to carry out the transaction? How do we make sure we're going to get paid? Well, the easiest way is to go through an auction service or like GoDaddy or Afternick or even selling it on your own. Now, what you're going to do is make sure that either the escrow service, if you're using escrow or the domain auction place, make sure they have the money in hand first from the client before that domain leaves your account. Very important because you don't want to give your domain and then hope you get paid. No, no, no. I want to make sure I get paid. So you could do that with auction sites or like my site. You can go to domains.blogprofitnetwork.com. You buy a domain, I get paid, then I transfer it to you. Very simple. Lawrence says, are the domains you buy and training us to buy aged domains? Some yes, some no. I've taught you both in this training. Lois says, do you buy domains from people going out of business and doing a transfer? Sometimes I will, but not directly. I'm going to get them after they expired. Uh, let's see. Damien says, hi, Marcus. How do you sell your domains, marketplaces, or to potential end users? Both. Sometimes I will sell them on a marketplace if I think they're really good for auction. Sometimes I'll sit on them and, and wait for someone to contact me, um, which that's where you want to get into like maybe having a P.O. box so that you can put your who is info as you. Otherwise, they'll have to go through a third party to contact you, which is a pain. And the who is info, if you just go to like who is um, dot domain tools dot com, what you're going to have is certain privacy issues. So like if you go affiliate marketing dude.com, you're going to see that you're going to see my info. Okay. So it'll be like, you know, Marcus Campbell, here's my PO box. Here's my business, everything like that. Okay. Which means you can contact me. So if you wanted to buy my domain, you contact me uh, using this stuff here. Okay. Now, if you're doing something else, um, a lot of times if you have like privacy, it's going to be something like this, redacted for privacy, uh, which to each his own. Sometimes I have them, sometimes I don't. I think this one just automatically had it or something like that. So, you yeah, know, we got to look at that. Um, but sometimes it'll have your actual info. And I would recommend, if you want to sell them, have your actual info in there, but get a P.O. box to secure yourself. Okay, so that's a good way to do it as well. Um, let's see what else we have. Christopher says, does it help to have traffic on a domain? Yes, it does help. Is it a waste of time? No, I would buy a domain that already has traffic. So yeah, you don't have to show traffic. Like Most of the domains I've sold to domain buyers are no traffic. Like They contact me because they want the name. They don't care about the traffic. Joseph says, how do you find a golden niche that's in demand? Well, what I would do is use your trigger words and go here. Like here, flowers is in demand. I could go find a domain for flowers. Boom, there we go. I'm in business. Um, that'll work well to find a niche using domains. Danny says, is there a time of year when good domains are more available? Well, it depends. If you're looking for Easter domains, right now is good. Christmas domains, Christmas time. Because what happens is people register them right around Easter, and then the next year when they expire, they all become available. Um, so yes and no. I would say more no than yes. Like, I'm not looking for... Christmas domains unless I want to set up a site. Um, so it just depends. Joseph, how do you find a... We already answered that. Um, Asif, I know we had a good look at GoDaddy appraisal. How do you compare it to Estebot? I think we answered that pretty good here. Um, again, relevancy is more important than what they say it's worth. Phil, I have so many unused domains that I was going to develop someday. Are long-time park domains worth much, or should I build a simple site? 
Well, again, you're going to have to go through them one by one. Figure out what they're worth. Do they have backlinks? Uh, what's the GoDaddy appraisal? What does Estebot say? Are there things similar selling? Are there people that you can contact that would buy these? Um, you got to look at each one as its own individual thing, right? You can't just say, I got a bunch of domains. What are they worth? No, no, no. Here's this domain. What's that one worth? Here's this one. What's that worth? And then make a list. Do this in Excel. Make a list. Go through and say, okay, what am I willing to take for these? And I think that's a better uh, racket to go. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Do I have an organized system to find, evaluate, and sell domains quickly? I use Excel, and then I, I keep certain domains at certain places. GoDaddy, that's where my auction ones are. Namecheap, that's where the ones are that I buy for eight bucks. Uh, other places, that's where I hold the domains that I want to keep. Um, so it just depends. That's my organization. And then, of course, I have a team that, that helps me with this as well. All right, Michael, how do you determine which domains should be flipped, as in worse, which need to be built out further? Well, what I want to do is I want to look at the ease of access. How easy is it for me to rank it? Nerd getting fit, boom, I got content. It took me days. I, I ranked it. That one, yeah, it's much better to build out. If it doesn't have the backlink structure or it didn't rank, then I'm probably just going to sell it unless I have some grand idea for it. Uh, but nine times out of ten, you have to look at, is there backlinks? Is there is it a good name? What is it I want to do with that? And again, individually, you have to look at these. Okay, Stephen, what are your thoughts on domain leasing? I love it as a buyer because I can buy a domain uh, like spamzilla.com. I bought for, uh, I think I bought it on a payment plan. It was like 300 bucks a month. And I'm like, okay, I'll buy it. And if, at the first month, if I don't, see something happening then i let it go and i'm only out 300 instead of three grand or whatever it is now as far as leasing to other people yeah you could absolutely do that um it is a paperwork headache but it could be valuable i mean depending uh usually i'll try to sell them outright because if you have the right buyer they're usually going to buy it and leasing is usually going to be if it's a really expensive domain um, but, you know, if you have your own in-house selling domains, you might want to add leasing to it, of course. Um, how, uh, Graham, Grandpa Mel says, how long do you need to hold a domain before flipping it? Hours. As soon as I buy it, I could flip it. Bobby, some domain companies show that a domain is locked for 60 days before you could transfer. Okay, so this is usually auction domains, um, and it's usually outside. So if I buy it at Namecheap, they don't want me to transfer it out of Namecheap. But if the person's within Namecheap, then I could sell it. And what I'll usually do is if someone wants to buy it within that window, I'll be like, hey, give me your GoDaddy username and I'll transfer it to your GoDaddy. You don't need their password, just their username. Um, and then I'll transfer it to you. That way it's in-house and we do those all the time. You can do those very fast. You don't have to wait 60 days. If it's outside, sometimes there is a caveat. Jojo, are there any sort of subscription or waiting list services that can let us know when top domains are finally available? Uh, Jojo, I do have one at blogprofitnetwork.com. Every week we talk about domains that I get. We have special sales. Um, sometimes we give away domains. Uh, blogprofitnetwork.com is a great place if you like my training and you want to learn from me. And that also includes my domain service. Paul, if you buy a domain and could not get a buyer, would you keep paying for hosting pending when you get a buyer for it? Well, Paul, um, you don't need to buy hosting. You just need it redirected unless you have a site. The only time you'd need hosting is if you have a site. Um, you know, So if you're just holding the domain, you don't need hosting. So the answer would be no. Mayan, my experience with GoDaddy was not so smooth. They always try to charge you more for domains that aren't even registered yet. Well, uh, do your due diligence. Like if I see a domain that's 5,000 bucks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look around, see if I could get it cheaper or 500 bucks or whatever. So do your research before you buy anything. Graham, I use Namecheap for all my domains. Does it matter which registrar you use? It does matter for auction purposes. Like if you're going to auction them at Cedo or Cedo, uh, you have to put them over there. Okay, so you would need to have them there. 
or need to prove you own them. Uh, but oftentimes it's easier if you just have them over there. Mike, when deciding on buying a domain, which is more important, the domain authority or the age? Neither. Neither. Um, like age doesn't matter as much as authority, but age could matter in reselling it. So it's going to have to do with what you want the name for. If I'm going to rank it, I want domain authority, I want rankings, I want listings, I want movements. If it's, hey, I want to sell this domain and someone owned it for the last 20 years and you just got it, yeah, that might be more attractive to someone else. So there you go. It has to do with what you're doing. Does .com usually hold more value than .net or .org? From what I've seen, yes, but that doesn't mean you can't make a living with .orgs and .nets. There's enough .nets and .orgs for everyone watching this to retire eventually, depending. I don't know. If we get a million views, maybe that won't be true. But that'd be a nice problem to have, right? So you got to look at that. Um, there's lots of money in all of them. Don, how can we tell the large traffic numbers on a site are people and not crawlers or robots? You could use something like SimilarWeb. So like if you do SimilarWeb for, uh, let's say we're going to do Sendflowers UA or whatever. SimilarWeb.com. This will give you a little breakdown of what the traffic looks like. So we'll go here, right like this, and then 50, 000, less than 50,000. So this would be not much traffic. Now, however, if I do um, affiliate marketing dude dot com, we're going to see, okay, this traffic is legit, and you can kind of see where they're coming from and get a little uh, overview of where they're coming from, right? So... This is not bot traffic. This is all solid, good traffic. Um, and here's where it comes from. Okay. Now, if you're going for something else, you're going to see uh, different types of numbers there. And also, you can look at Ahrefs keywords to see what the keywords are. Because if they're ranking for good keywords, chances are they're getting traffic from those. So, very important to look at. Uh, very good to look at. Awesome stuff. All right. Let's keep going here. Um... Do you actually use the domain with some content or do you focus on the flipping? Depends on the name. Sometimes I'll flip, sometimes I'll build. Bayard says, how do you avoid buying a domain that has bad history? Sometimes I don't care. Like if it has bad history, but it's a name that I think will sell, I'll buy it anyway. Um, if you're looking for SEO, then yeah, you might want to avoid that. And you're going to do that by looking at the spam score in Spamzilla, SZ score, right? And the higher, I think it's bad is higher. It'll tell you if it's bad, but you can kind of see uh, which ones are bad and which ones are good. I think it'll tell you here. Let's see. Yeah, it'll, it'll give you like a rundown on what it was used for. Um, so use that, that that is your friend. Kim says, let's say you find several similar domains that you could use for a certain niche with equal pricing, but you can only afford one. What are some of the things you might consider that would break the tie? Backlinks, short name, value in GoDaddy, pretty much the stuff that we went over here. I would say watch this again, and it'll give you that idea. Deborah, when selling a domain that has WordPress landing page, is it actually selling a website, correct? If, you're, if it's your site, you can sell it with a website. If someone else has content on it and you're only buying the domain, all you bought is the domain. This is something we get into a lot where my students are like, hey, they own this domain and there was content, therefore I'm going to reuse it. Well, then, you know, you don't exactly own that. You have to get the rights to the stuff. It's very, very dicey if you don't. Manuel says, who is your best provider to buy expired domain names? Personally, I like Spamzilla. Uh, and you can get my training on Spamzilla at Spamzilla.com. How do you reduce the buying of an expired domain name that's been used for spamming? Again, look at the spam score. Anna, thanks for the free course. My question is, when domain flipping for profit, is it only successful when selling pre-used domains? No, not at all. What if you bought a domain yourself that had never been registered, you minted it yourself? That's absolutely, like, most of the ones that I've sold um, have not been expired ones. They've been ones that I actually came up with on my own. So yeah, absolutely. Marco, do you use an escrow agent to sell your domains? When the client asks for it, yes. Um, 
And if I was selling it, yes, I would use it if I was the seller as well. Uh, Bryce, I've been a lurker for some time. I have more of your talks in my collection than anyone else. And my honest opinion, and I've listened to the Smoke and Mirror people, you're the only one of half a dozen real deals out there. Okay, thank you for that. My question is, is if I wanted to earn $2,000 a month consistently and was prepared to put 8 to 10 hours a week into one of your many opportunities, would domain flipping be at the top of your list? Uh, well, I would say it should be part of it, but not all of it. If you want to make $2,000 a month, I would start with a good website. Check out highticketniches.com get started there and also do domain flipping as well. I think those are good to have and I think you'll you'll get a good result. Again, I can't guarantee you'll make anything. There's no way anyone will know what you make. Um, this is a business, there is risk. These are all my opinions, albeit I've been doing this 22 years. I think we got some good stuff for you, um, but you really have to look at it and say, what is it that I want? If I wanna do domains and make 2000 a month, okay, how many do I need to sell? What kind of work and what's the investment going to look like? Okay, good. Uh, if I build a website, what's it going to look like? And what I would do is I would have multiple things. I would have a website that makes me some passive income. I'd have some domains that I can sell and I'd go about building an entire business out of it. So my answer to you, Bryce, would be do all of it. There's lots of stuff here uh, that you can use. And, you know, when you're going out there, if you're doing both of these, you're going to come across a domain that you might not be able to sell, but it might kick butt for SEO and you could build a site on it. Uh, like Nerd Getting Fit, I'm building a site that's going to be passive income as soon as I get off my butt and stop being too busy to work on it. Um, that's something you can build that'll, that'll provide an income for a long time. So use them in conjunction with each other. And I hope you guys enjoyed this training. Again, watch it more than once, two, three times. Take notes. This has a lot of stuff that's going to show you how to price your domains, how to buy the domains, how to know what you're getting into. And in the description, I've listed some other videos on Spamzilla, domains I've bought and sold, and other things to help you get rocking and rolling, making money online, buying and selling domains. Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciated this. Smash a like button because this video was a doozy to film. Took a lot of work. Thanks for being here.